We're near the border between Ukraine and Russia, the front line of a crisis. A couple of hours in that direction, thousands of Russian troops, tanks, artillery are on standby. And also, just a few kilometers in that direction, Putin-backed rebels control the region. Tensions are high, and many on the Ukrainian side think that war is coming. But this is about more than tanks and troops and artillery. This is about power and posturing. So, what's really going on in Ukraine? And crucially, will Vladimir Putin invade? More than 100,000 Russian troops and tanks have taken up positions on Ukraine's border. The US and its allies say they're ready to invade an independent European nation. Vladimir Putin says he's protecting his people, and it's the West who are pushing for a war. Neither side are backing down, as weapons from NATO allies flood into Ukraine to counter the Russian threat. And it's this tension between Putin and NATO that's driving this standoff. The new NATO flag, marking the determination of the Western powers to defend their freedom. NATO is a military alliance between the US, Canada and the democracies in Europe set up at the beginning of the Cold War to prevent the Soviet Union invading Europe. The agreement says that if any NATO member is attacked, the others will come to its aid. When Putin came to power in 1999, NATO had 19 members. Now it has 30. And some of those countries used to be part of the Soviet Union. Putin says NATO is trying to expand its influence over Europe and countries that Russia used to control. Ukraine is the latest country which could join and NATO has repeatedly said it would welcome the alliance. Each and every nation has the right to choose its own path. So Russia says its troops need to be on the border of Ukraine because NATO's expansion right up to Russia's doorstep is the last straw for Putin. Ukraine is a country Putin has a particular interest in. Last year, in an epic 5,000-word essay, he claimed the two countries are, quote, one people. That's because for hundreds of years, Ukraine belonged to the Russian Empire, and for most of the 20th century, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. But when the USSR collapsed in 1991, 92% of Ukrainians voted for independence. For the next two decades, the country wrestled with whether to align itself with Europe or Russia. Then in 2013, it looked like the balance had tipped. Ukraine's government rejected the European Union for closer ties with Russia. This decision was met with mass protests, which spilled into violence and revolution, as Ukraine's pro-Russian leader was overthrown. Less than a week later, Russian forces seized Crimea, an area with a large Russian population. Then, Putin sent more troops, this time into eastern Ukraine, to support pro-Russian uprisings, sparking a conflict that has killed more than 14,000 people, and still continues to this day. All of this has led us here to this deadlock. Putin on one side demanding a stop to NATO expansion. The West on the other side demanding that Russia withdraws its troops. So this is about history. This is about geopolitics. And this is about Putin himself. Putin finds it hard to de-escalate and he is very bright obsessed in many of such situations. He wants to prove to all Russians that Russia is once again, a great world power. Putin will remember how his popularity soared after he seized the Crimea in 2014. And state-run news has been making threatening sounds on behalf of the Kremlin. But whether the Russian people actually want a war is far less clear and fewer than a fifth of Russians actually support reuniting the two countries. There is no enthusiasm about war with Ukraine. It was not the case before, it is not now. And Russian officials have repeatedly denied invasion plans. We will not attack, strike, invade, quote unquote, whatever, Ukraine. But 
Putin has proven to be unpredictable. The reality is that none of us really know what President Putin's intentions are. Both sides are backing words with military might, and no one is backing down for now. The people of Ukraine hope it will be talks, not tanks, that decide the outcome.